and remains to be seen. We have having some uh, talks now. Uh, not sure. Not sure yet. Um, don't know. I mean, I wish I can tell you for sure what we're going to do. We're still thinking about a few different things. I know PB his minutes um, probably will increase slowly. Um, we haven't decided what we will do. Uh, we're talking to a medical performance, Russell and myself. Uh, but we'll, we'll make that decision. We were whatever we do, I, I feel comfortable with you know, we're gonna, always gonna do what's right for the for each individual player. And then Rui with conjunctivitis, I know that's pretty contagious. I, I, I guess he's not with the team, right? Um, that was something that he had to go through last year for a very different reason. What have you tried to do to kind of keep him involved as he's been out? Well, just making sure, you know, everybody still stays connected with her. That's the hardest thing to do as a player. You're, when you're, you have an injury uh, or something like he has now, um, it's being away from your team. Uh, you just, you just feel, you feel lost and, and it's not easy, but our players have done a good job of making him feel connected. Plus he's here today now. So today was his first day he came in the building. So he's no longer contagious. He's still, but still, you know, he still has to take all the, the, the medications and the, the time. And hopefully he gets a little, uh, maybe a very light workout. Uh, don't even know if that's going to be the case today, but it was just great. It's actually great to see him. I haven't seen him in so long, uh, you know, texting and all of that, but it's good to see him. He's in pretty good spirits. He's, he's, he wants to get back, obviously, uh, what he brings. Uh, just that consistent uh, performer, and his his defense has gotten much better. He was he's obviously a big part of our team going forward, but he's in the building, so that's a, that's a good sign at the start. Zach, hey coach, um, last night did you feel like at times you were missing a third scoring option with Rui out and Davis obviously playing limited minutes? Yeah, I mean. Rui, arguably, I mean, he's and he, every just seems like every night it's gonna he's gonna get you 13 to 15 points. Any given night, he can get you 25. Um, but uh, the thing I like about it, it just gives us another big body, a tough body that we can switch. Our defense was really good last night. Our effort was really good last night, and the way we have it, the rotations right now. You know, with um, Brad and, and Russell trying to keep them, one of those guys on the floor. So we can always, we can always use another guy because uh, you know, when they're on the floor, we have two really dynamic scores together. But Rui, like I said, you know, we definitely miss them. We're not an excuse uh, team. We we still feel like we haven't we had enough to win that game. Our effort was uh, good enough to win that game. I think that's the effort you're going to see. It's Russell uh, raises the intensity level up on everybody. Everybody has to be locked in on every possession. That's what that's what winning basketball players do. And then you, then you double him up with Brad. I think our, our group's going to get really good. And then you add Rui back in the mix and DB giving him more minutes eventually. Uh, I like I like where we are. I like where we're going. Thanks, Coach. Happy holidays. Thank you. Appreciate it, Zach. Chris Miller. Scotty, how you doing? Doing good, Chris. How you doing? I'm well. Happy holidays to you and your family as well. Uh, I want to go to 553 left in the game. You're tied at 93. Um, defensively, where was the disconnect? Because it just, well, obviously you can look back at the film to see how much Philly was attacking the paint. Where does the responsibility kind of lie on the floor when things like that happen down the stretch? Well, I, I think, you know, the, the, they're obviously a, a, an elite basketball team with, two high, high level players. And, and indeed he was like, he was locked in, he was engaged. And, and when he's like that, he's a problem. We, we've doubled, we tripled, we played straight up and they, they have some shooters on the floor. I, I think we made, we made some, we made some mistakes with our communication. Um, and, but we also made some mistakes offensively. We missed a lot of easy opportunities to score. Sometimes, you know, most of the time, not even sometimes, you can, if you get a bucket, 
allows your defense to really set up and allows their offense to be stagnant at times. And I give them credit. They got some stops. They turned us over too many times. Uh, but I like, I like where we are. First game, being on the road, um, we're get, we want a chance to win every game. And with our backcourt, they're going to give us a chance. And we just have to uh, tinker with a few things going forward. You said communication in your in your soundbite there, Scotty, and we all know that's something that you really talked about all last year, even including in the bubble. Do you feel like the communication breakdown is just this year incorporating a guy like Russ and maybe incorporating new schemes as opposed to the narrative that was presented last year about lack of communication? Yeah, you know, I, I think now I, I, I saw last night where we had great communication throughout the game. And a lot of times when the game, when you have a team that you're so, and it was an intense game, uh, the referees allowed both teams to really, you know, play through contact. And so when you have an intense situation, you still, sometimes you forget whether you're a young player, or just any player in the league, you forget that communication is still highly important. Uh, uh, successful and it helps the team so you're not guessing and I thought I thought that happened I think our next step I thought the communication was great until you know towards the towards the you know even like the nine minute mark uh, that fourth quarter and that's when you really have to even do much better job I think it's gonna it's definitely I see it I see it coming last year I was hoping and hope should never be a strategy but I was hoping that it would come around but when you have a, a team full of inexperienced players and quiet players on top of that. Uh, but I, I, Russell is obviously a very vocal uh, leader and he says the right things because he does the right things and because he believes in all those things. And he's, uh, he's been great. And I think with him and Brad, uh, with the group, I think you're gonna see much more of, of a consistent uh, level of intensity throughout the game and our communication will improve game by game. Thanks, Scotty, appreciate it. Fred. Hey, Scott. Um, after looking back at the, the game and seeing it last night, did you, um, did you see anything with lineup combinations that, that you didn't expect when you put them together in either direction? Something that you put out there and you're like, oh, I like that and I didn't expect that or vice versa? Yeah, uh, well, I hate, I don't, I'm not like, one of the things I, I focus on, we, we're all together as a team, but there is got definitely going to be some lineups out there um, that are going to be different from our starting lineup. But I always, I always try to group us as a team. But there's like last night, I don't, I don't think that uh, the bench did not do a, a good, a good job like they've done, you know, the last couple of days in practice and the, even the last exhibition game. Uh, I know they can play better. I've talked to all, I talked to the group today and I talked to the guys individually. They know they can play better. And I have a lot of confidence. It's one game uh, and a lot of, a lot of moving parts, a lot of new parts and a lot of different spots. Uh, you know, with Rui out, we're changed a lot of things that going forward just to kind of uh, fight, you know, fight, keep, continue to have good minutes without him. But I, I'm surprised that um, the, the, the bench did not play better, but I anticipate them coming back, uh, bouncing back next game. Ava. Hey, Scott. Uh, Merry Christmas. Um, wondering about, you mentioned turnovers last night. Obviously, you guys had a little bit too many of them. We were talking to some guys afterwards. Um, I think it was Russ who said, you know, if he's, if he's playing hard, if he's trying to make the play, he's fine with some of those turnovers. Wondering where you kind of fall on, yeah, some of those are going to happen when you're playing the way Russ plays and, and needing to scale it back. Yeah, it, it, I, the, I always like classify turnovers in many different categories. There's there's turnovers you're trying to help your team uh, score, and then there's turnovers you're trying to uh, get get some scoring opportunities for yourself. And I thought our turnovers last night. They were they were trying to help the guys uh, to get looks, and a lot of them were unforced, and a lot of them were just random. Like Russell had a random one, Brad had a, an easy one. I think I didn't even think Russell threw it to him. He bobbled the ball. Those are the turnovers you can live with. The ones that you're just trying to you know break the play and and trying to create for yourself, and those are the ones I don't like. Um, but 
definitely 20 turnovers. I thought we played pretty good offensively. We missed some layups. I thought we missed some opportunities, but we take away, you know, cut away. You know, we've been a pretty good um, last year. We were pretty good not turning the ball over. And I, I still, I feel we have a, we still have a team that's not going to turn it over a lot. Um, but yeah, Ru Russell's turnovers, he, he does so many good things. I never, I mean, you look at all the top, the league leaders in turnovers, you know, you, you would take any of them on your team, but. Uh, the ones I don't like, and we don't—I didn't see many of them, I, if any—is the is the selfish turnovers that you're trying to score go through three players. And then with your guys' um, home opener coming up, obviously, is the is home court advantage this year without fans? Kind of just being in comfort of getting to sleep in your own bed and being familiar with all of the testing protocols in your arena. How does that kind of change this year for you guys? It definitely still is still a home advantage because, like you said, we're we're at our home, we're in our home. Uh, we have our normal routine. Uh, we're familiar with the the building. We definitely miss the fans. Uh, it's for for the entire NBA. We're all in the same position, uh, but it's definitely it's, we want to protect it, um, and we feel that there's still an advantage being home and. And we, we know that, I mean, on the road, there's just different, the protocols are so different than our normal, but you still have to be able to adapt without excuses. And uh, our group has done that so far. We have to, you know, can't let our guard down. We can't, you know, we have to continue to do what we need to do to stay, to stay safe. But home, home definitely is, um, it's easier. It's definitely easier to get around and move around and the being familiar with what we do on a day-to-day -day basis can help you play and perform better at home. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. All right, last question from Neil. Hey, Coach. Uh, to follow up on Chris's question a little bit, last six minutes of the game, there were a couple screens where Russ maybe was expecting a switch, and then there were a couple times where he was playing a little bit of center field and Simmons was by the rim. I'm curious, are those just – Things that you know, chemistry-wise, they're going to take some time, or are they just in the moment mental lapses, or a combination of all of that? I, I think, I think that I think that particular time, Russell thought Simmons was clearing out, uh, so he was going to, and he thought Embiid was rolling, so he made a decision. We didn't have the backside um, ready, but he pro he probably, if he had to do it over again, we were if the game was played in slow motion, he, he would have never done that. But you have to make these plays. Uh, quick. These are all quick decisions, and you know, probably some of it is some of their mistakes is that we haven't been together. But some of them, you know, they made the same mistakes that we made. They were just able to capitalize on some of the some of their um, some of their offense. I thought they they have two. They have really. MB was as high. He made every he made every mid range shot, and those are the shots you kind of want to live with with the contest. And he was able to make some of those. Well. For me, it doesn't change anything. I think I can. So, so, some games I could, I can do the same thing in uh, five, ten minutes. What I can do in thirty minutes, so it's not that big of a difference. Uh, but how I manage, that's more up to the coaching staff. Because you know, when they tell me to check in, I check in. Chase. Uh, yes. Hey, Davis. Um, first of all, you know when you came in. Uh, yesterday and hit those three threes and really changed the game. Um, you know, that I know you played in the preseason, but you hadn't really played in a, a game that counted in, in a long time. Uh, what did it, can you just describe what that sequence was like and, and, and how it felt to be back out there? Well, that sequence basically, I think uh, when I got the first one from the corner and then after that, when, uh, when the second one came in and the next offense, then, uh, then the feeling came is like I'm back. I just needed like 15 minutes on the court to make up for those seven months, and uh, and then the third one was when when I let that go. I was like, that's for sure. Ed. And um, Coach Brooks said that he thought the defense was really good last night, and you know that's not something we heard him say a lot last year. As a guy who was on this team last year, what did you see that was different? Uh, I think the overall effort, you know, the, we, we still made mistakes, but uh, I think we didn't give up on plays. Uh, you know, sometimes we got stuck on the screens, but uh, I think the intensity was there. Uh, awareness was there. We switched out. We, we kept hustling on defense, even on the mismatches, helped each other. And uh, 
I think the biggest key is just helping each other. You know, we're we going to make mistakes on defense, uh, but if you play a team defense, we, we can uh, fix those mistakes easily. Fred. Hey, Davis. Uh, curious, do you have conversations with, with Russell when, since you're both just so new to each other about where you like the ball, like in terms of placement on passes, floor placement, all that kind of stuff? Well, we haven't really had a conversation like that. I think it just came naturally. Uh, you know, I think I'm pretty good at finding the open space on the court, and uh, and Russ is excellent at finding players when they're open. So it just came natural, and uh, I never even had to tell him like I want to be there or I want to come off the screen that way. It just I think he's seen plenty uh, last season when playing against us. Is is there a spot in particular? That you like to receive the ball that you feel the most comfortable going up? Uh, behind the three point line. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Ava. Hey, Davis. Um, this might be a, a silly question, so sorry, but you you spoke about how um, for like months and months when you were back home over the summer, all you could do was individual work in the gym. Are, by that, do you just mean you're literally just there every day, like putting up three after three after three, or what your kind of individual regimen in, entail? Well, individual work was plenty of time in the weight room, keeping my legs ready, you know. That's, I think, the toughest part coming back. If you haven't put played for a while, if your legs aren't ready, then uh, it's tough to get back in the rhythm. And uh, that was one of the keys the whole summer. And the second one was I just kept working on what I'm doing on the court. I didn't invent a new bicycle. I just kept doing what I do, shooting threes, uh, sometimes standing a little bit further away from the basket and uh, making sure the consistency is there, whether it's from the three-point line or further out. Cool. Thank you. Neil. Hey, Davis. Um, for pretty much your entire career, you know, 75% of your shot attempts have been behind the three-point line. I'm curious for you, how do you balance, you know, a lot of teams are going to key on you for that, but how do you balance either taking a two-point shot on a drive or giving the ball up? Is it just a matter of you in the moment saying, okay, whether you're open or not? How does all of that kind of process in your head during the game? I think uh, there's a lot on whether I've had a couple of looks that uh, I got, like I, I always try to get the first one, second one, a, a good look, and uh, I make those. Then uh, after that, it's basically then I don't care if I catch the ball. If I'm confident I can make the shot regardless of the defense. So yeah, the, the the key is always the first one, a good look when you check in, especially coming off the bench. And then after that, it's just whatever. Like if the defense is really doing a great job and. Uh, two guys are on me jumping out, then of course I try to find a, find a teammate to keep moving if, if they get a good look out of that or I just keep moving and get myself open again. Chris Miller. Phoebe, uh, Steph and Damian Lillard have both kind of, <clears throat> I, I would assume they're joking, but with those two and the way that they shoot, they, they talked about maybe one time launching from half court have you ever thought about doing it or have you ever done it that we've just never seen it where you just said, as soon as I cross half court, I'm letting it fly? Uh, sorry, I can't really say half court, but I think last season a couple of times was, was pretty close to the, to the half court circle area. Then, you know, it, it depends on the feeling, you know, it's not going to be my first option. It's not going to be the, the game probably, but, uh, but if I make some, you know, especially if I got some looks that I've been deeper a little bit, then, you know, why not if I, if I can make it, you know, I know that the coach might say something if I miss it, but if I make it, no one's going to say anything. Okay. You're up 20 with like two minutes to go. Well, you probably wouldn't be in the game then, though, but would you think about doing it then? Uh, no, up 20, we're running out the clock for sure. Okay. So it would be like an in-game situation where like the game is close. You would probably think about it. Uh, yeah, I would, I would say the most likely one is uh, a game that is almost out of reach, you know, like 20 seconds left and down six. And you need that three from wherever. And if you make it, you still give yourself a chance. And, and very often in those situations where you're down six, like the other team is doing everything in their power to not let you shoot threes and just let you go to the two-point shot. And uh, that's when you sometimes get to launch it from 
crossing the half court. <laughs>